Mm-hmm. Should be up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and mean, it takes a minute for Twitch too. It's always a little bit behind because buffering. Okay, this pin. So how's Ark performing with that, um, 3070? So I've been fucking around with this lock all day, and I've like launched pins and lost pins like seven times in a row. Hey, <laughs> I did like a full cleanup of my desk just searching for one of these pins that got launched into the middle of nowhere. So, I guess, um, lock picking has been the best thing to happen to my, uh, my house hygiene, I guess.
They didn't. They didn't. Zone four. Okay. Oops. Not hold on to the stupid pen. So I got a couple locks that I ordered like months ago. Um, and they're, I was thinking of um, giving my parents um, some locks, some padlocks that were keyed to their house so that they can um, just place the old like master locks they have on their gates with something that's really convenient. All they need is the key for their house and they can open it. And I got one for myself, so whenever the uh, management office gets around to hiring more than one um, dude for maintenance, I'll be able to ask them if I can put a lock on my gate. Because fuck it. Only slight problem with them. Grab one. Oh, wow, that's really shiny on camera. Is that they have like a super thick shackle. So, um, I know their uh, back gate doesn't have a super um, wide hole for uh, shackles like that. So, I'm wondering if they can just have that like expanded with a little stepper drill. My stepdad has any of this. I wonder if there's enough metal on it to do that.
It's kind of a pain in the ass to reassemble because it's a uh, lock out, tag out lock. Did I ever tell you about that um, format before? So what the idea is, is um, in some industrial applications, you'll have machinery or even like brooms. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is that you, you lock up like a key switch or whatever to let people know that you're in this dangerous machinery or that this lock or that this electricity box needs to be um, kept safe. So what you would do is you would get one key and pretty much only one key, maybe a second key for the boss in case they really need to like fuck with it. But the general OSHA rules I think are supposed to be like one key with maybe some exceptions. And that only that guy can unlock the thing. Basically, yeah. Then and they usually have restricted key blanks so that you can't just go to a store and buy copies of them. Got to do the fucking thing again. They're also usually um, key retaining, which means that um, if the lock is unlocked, uh, you cannot take the key out. You have to push the shackle in and uh, lock it. It's actually a neat feature on the that uh, lock I showed you earlier that I said I keyed up for my parents' house is it has a little Z bar, that actually it's right here, um, that you can put in or out of the, can you even see that? A little better angle. You basically put that on the back of the lock cylinder, and if it's on there, then it'll be key retaining, and if you take it off, it's not. Oops.
Nine uh, stupid things. These ball bearings keep on slipping out. I'm beginning to see why it was like filled with grease all over earlier. Keep these fuckers from moving. God, everything is just fucking falling apart on this stupid lock. There we go. Fuck Christ. I wish they had made this a little bit more user friendly. And the interesting thing is, uh, with these lotto locks is that, um, for much of the market, I believe uh, Masterlock has a big uh, share in that, and one of their most popular uh, locks is a is called the um, 410 Lotto Lock, and uh, the impetus behind this was they, uh, this company Packlock was getting into the market for Lotto Locks, and the Master Lock has six pins, which means it has a lot of different combinations, which is what you want in these lotto locks. You don't want to accidentally give somebody the keys to another person's uh, lockout lock. But the problem was that a lot of companies, a lot of like the really, really, really big companies, that still wasn't enough of a key space. So what Packlock did was they basically just added another pin. Oh, 
Oh shoot, do I not have my... I do not, I'll be right back. Second, finally, Jesus Christ. Okay, now on to the thing that I want to do tonight. And I forgot to get the key for this, I'll be right back. Actually, gonna warm up this little before I on picking this. Oh, thanks for following me. Got it. I think this is now my second cutest walk in my 
collection. Because I got a smaller master lock yesterday. Son of a... Fuck! <laughs> okay, where'd that fucking pin go? I'm gonna make BRB.
Well, I have no idea where that pin went. Fucking as usual. So we'll make do with what we have. I'll just start with those two. Uh, let's
some milling. There we go. Okay, that's two pins down. This is the part where I start to struggle with this lock. It's past three pin or past two pins. See if we can get it tonight. Deeper hook. Okay, one is stuck in the counter milling. 
She was stuck in the counter milling, I think. Three. Three stuck in the counter milling, I think. I think that one's set. Oh, there we go. That was three pins. Okay. I'm gonna give that a couple more picks to see if I can get it consistently. Short hook first. The really annoying thing with this lock, I think I mentioned to you this the first time. Uh, I like was trying to show off the pins, but basically what you have to do is you have to keep lifting these one at a time because they'll they'll bind, but only for a minute. And you just need to keep inching them up. Um, to what we call the counter milling, which is basically it's like two lines that are carved into this chamber here at the very top of the plug. And what those will do is they'll catch these lips right here. And what, what you basically are aiming to try to do is um, get all the pins so that Every single one of them has that little lip caught in the counter milling. And then you just push them up from there. And there's usually like two or three lines. So I'll be caught two or three times.
Got that. One set. Now we're set to. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Huh. Must have been an interesting Halloween.
Yeah, you got it. <sighs> yeah, just because you you want to do it a couple times before you move on to more pins, yeah. Let me look up when I bought this, because it's been a couple months. Lock picking I started last November. The nine months I've been doing it. Yeah. And I was I was watching like lock picking videos for like, I don't know. Four to five months before I even decided I was like yeah I want to do that like scarfing down shit Uh, it depends on you. Um, I mean, this, this vice isn't even all that uh, expensive. It's like $20 at Harper Freight. Um, yes. So I, I have a couple picks here that I can show off. So the first ones I started out with were these South Wards. Uh, and they're kind of an older, um, Kind of well-known company, and this and these would have been the first things that I ever got, and I got them in a super nice case too. Um, I'm not a big fan of what we call bottom of the keyway tension tools, um, because I I feel like you don't have enough space. So, for example, if I have this, like for this lock, it's pretty all right because this is an enormous keyway and if i really wanted to uh i could if i can get it right i could use yeah um so the ones you'll you'll see in movies or the classic pick uh tension are these yeah Yeah, it, it just gives you so much extra space because look at that. And especially with like something like this, like, uh, well, obviously that one's way too big, but even the um, smallest one that they come with, which I lost. Oh, there it is. Like, you have like maybe. A millimeter 
a space to work with. And I, I kind of got around that by using, um, by using this half diamond, which is like a really small profile. Um, but I eventually grew out of that when I um, bought these top of the keyway tension things. And you don't have to get them in this form factor. It's just something I was like, yeah, I'll get those. Uh, the bend in these is um, more for if you want to pick in hand. It's really comfortable for that. Although not for this lock. This one's kind of too small to take advantage of it. But if, if you took like this or this, it'd be really comfortable. Um, and these, th this whole set costs like 25 bucks, which is probably way too much, um, all things considered. Yeah, I mean, okay, uh, for just these tensioners here, this, um, uh, this lockpick set right here, um, this was about... 25 bucks, yeah. So for all all this crap right here, that was about 25 bucks. And it's this is a pretty good set. Um, if I if I had, uh, so a couple of these are rakes, which are um, you basically um, put a tension tool in there and tension it, and then you just scrub around until you randomly set it or. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's really cool when you can get it. It's really fun, and it's even a really good, like, beginner thing to try and get people into. The problem is, is that it doesn't work with certain biddings. So... It, it works a lot better when you, for example... If this was all the key, um, the, those three cuts, um, that little staircase is perfect for um, is perfect for raking, especially. Um, so there's different kinds of rakes. So there's the snake rake, which the idea is that you'll come in at a couple different angles and just keep pushing back and forth until you kind of get all the things to the right angle, and then the You can damage a lock lock picking. So a very important thing to uh, keep in mind is that most locks are made of brass. Most lock picks are made of steel. Yeah. So anytime you um, put a pick in a lock, you can potentially damage it, which is why um, there are two big rules to lock picking one don't pick lock picks or don't pick locks that you don't own that's pretty obvious or you don't have permission to like if somebody says i eh, go for it yeah um and then the second rule is don't pick locks in use and the reason behind that is if you rely on this to say uh keep your garden shed full of like your power tools locked um and you break it well now you don't have a lock it it's not often that you completely break a lock like just lock picking it but it's it's a good idea not to just like fucking go ham on your your uh on your front door Yeah. And I, I still don't recommend it. Um, but another, um, so since I've started lock picking, uh, another um, lock pick set that has come out from a community member, Jimmy Longs, that like we've all been recommending people are these little uh, handles. Or are these little picks? They're super high quality, and 
this whole like set of 16 or, or of six picks uh cost like 18 dollars and you don't even need all of these you can like probably get away with this these are just slightly different profiles so you see one of them has a flat tip if it it's if it's focused i actually don't know if it is and let's see that's probably a little bit better yeah yeah uh one of them's just really flat at the top and one of them's uh more rounded and it has a tinier profile so actually this is a i think you can see the difference from here but yeah um yeah so what were you gonna say <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't need anything crazier than that. Yeah. I'm just using the GoPro that I took to fucking Norway. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of got it more for this than the Norway trip, but it worked out. Um, but yeah. Um, the lock picks are actually kind of the cheap part. Um... Because, I mean, you can get, like, $100 sets of lock picks, but these will, if you're, if you're treating them all right, like, um, one of the problems when people start out is um, they'll really hammer on the tension tool. So they'll, because you don't, you don't, Kind of, yeah. Um, so, so a lot of people will just hammer on to the tension. And what that does is it makes the, the key or the pins bind more. But, but the problem is, is that you can get to a point where you can get them to bind too hard. And you're basically just pushing against a brick. And so you can bend or break these kind of, if you're not careful. Um, the the mindset on tension is changing um since like you probably start uh did your picking way back in the day the old mantra was to use the softest touch you could and we yeah like the the old mantra was like you you basically need the amount of pressure that you'd put on like a member a membrane keyboard you don't need a lot just to get a lock open but the um that that's kind of changed now uh because you you do also want that hard binding so it's not necessarily a bad thing that you're that you're pushing hard but it it's just a bad thing if you push too hard so the idea that uh somebody like lock picking lawyer pushes is to use as much tension as the lock can tolerate so that's not heavy tension but it's heavier tension than the little feathering um another thing is that you've probably noticed that i have a couple of these and the idea is that you have them in different thicknesses. 
So the smallest one of these is like 25 thousandths of an inch. Um, the largest is 50 thousandths of an inch. Uh, and I also have a 32 thousandths of an inch. So um, one of the things you want to do is you want the most rigid um, piece of metal you can stick in there. So if, if it's a 25 thousandths, then it's a 25 thousandths. But if you can fit something like a 50 thousandths pry bar in there, um, you'll get better feedback. And you'll also want to use the thickest pick that you can get because it can take more punishment and it can also um, give you better feedback potentially. So for example, these, oh, hello. These south words that I started with, are 25 thousandths of an inch thick. And that's, like you can get thicker picks, but this is probably the thickest practical pick uh, you should go for. Um, and then I have these Petersons, which I'm not a big fan of them. I tried them out. Um, the biggest thing was that before I got these Jimmy Long picks, I really needed something that could reach deeper, and these um, longer hooks were a lot better for that. But he goes down into the 15th, uh, 15 thousandths of an inch, uh, which is the blue one. Uh, the pink one is 18, and the black one is 20 thousandths of an inch. And so, uh, for American style locks, we generally have keyways that um, the saying is you can drive a bus through them. Uh, like Quickset, even Schlage. Schlage is a lot better, but it's still, like, compared to European locks, they're, like, fucking... They're, they're what we call paracentric, which means if you had, like, a line drawn down the center, you'd see that a lot of them are crisscrossing into that area. So... That's where these uh, little 15 thousandths uh, make sense, is in those super tight keyways. And these Jimmy Longs are, are kind of a split in the middle. They're 19 thousandths of an inch. So for a beginner, they're, they're still pretty robust, but they're, they're, they're not built like a tank like these motherfuckers. <laughs> so... And then another thing uh, that uh, beginners can kind of have trouble with is what we call the warding. So those little things that stick out into the middle of the keyway. Uh, this one's probably a better one if it has focus. So you see on this side, sorry, the camera's flipped for me, so it's a little weird. Um, there's like a little piece sticking into the keyway, and that's called the warding. And some, uh, some of the more paracentric or some of the crazier keyways, what you can get is um, some warding that can make it hard to pick the pins. And what beginners will do is they'll try to be picking the warding instead of the pins, um, which can easily break picks you're smashing into an immovable object basically yeah so for a lockpick set um, if you want to try raking um, this is a decent set I'd, I'd actually go for their thinner uh, picks they're like 22 thousandths because they're um, nicer picks and um, they're a little bit thinner and pretty gorgeous. Um, but these Jimmy, these Jimmy Long lock picks, they're fucking amazing. I've I've loved them since I bought them like a couple months ago. And uh, all you, yeah, yeah, he has a website. Um, yeah, and after that, all you'd need to do is buy. Um, the tensioners uh, individually so you could go to like th south Ord's site and you could buy like these or you could go to like sparrows or covert instruments 
the the covered instruments is where I got these from. They're a little they're a little overpriced. Uh, actually, a lot of their stuff is overpriced, and the, the community doesn't appreciate lock picking lawyer for doing that. Um, but you know, I I have liked these. They're overpriced, but they're good. Uh, the sparrows they they have like a flat version of these that I mean you could buy the cheaper ones and then just bend them, or you could buy some music wire and like bend that. I've I've done that. It's really fun. Um, the problem is, is I gave those to uh, Vegar, and it turns out he's left-handed, so these little bends don't work for him. And then they eventually uh, <laughs> they wore out so much that they're not sticking in the lock for him. So he needs to buy some new ones, which sucks. I wish I had anticipated that. Yeah. And then, if you really want to get into it, if you like have a Dremel or just something to bend metal, you can make your own lock picks and your own tensioning tools. That's really cool. Yeah. The the main thing I think I was trying to say earlier is that the lock picks are tend to not be the more expensive part. What where the money starts to come in is with all these locks, because especially if you buy them new, like this was maybe fifteen bucks. This right here was like twenty five bucks. The advanced version of this, which, uh, where did I put that key? So this key has two little uh, interacting parts. So you have the main pin tumbler. For this lock right here, only that top portion matters, but the more advanced version, the, the ASA Max Plus, um, has just a little secondary thing that's on like the left-hand side that you have to pick. And that thing, new costs like 90 bucks and then let me grab something really cool with that that's like my lock pick <laughs> my lock collection right there at least all the um non padlock stuff um like these these were the two locks i grabbed while i was in norway um i think this one was around 40 to 50 bucks this one was around 100 bucks this one's a super advanced one so i'm not I mean, both of these are pretty hard picks, so they're they're both kind of really cool, uh, and I don't mind the money I spent on that. Um, a lot of these I bought from other uh, lockpick community members. So this is a Japanese lock, uh, Miwa. I don't think you can see the writing on there because of the lighting. Here we go, and this is. A really cool like wafer lock that's like most wafer locks like this one that you'd see in filing cabinets are pretty shit but these these ones are really cool um, 
I think I got this one off a of community member used for like 10, 15 bucks. Um, I bought this on Amazon. This is like a French Abus um, Euro lock and cost me 20, 20 bucks. And it, it came as a full cylinder that I just cut in half for convenience. That's cool. And then these are all like maybe five bucks right here. Uh, this was, this is probably the shittiest lock you can buy in um, Walmart um, called, a, it's a quick set clone called um, Hyper Lock. Just the shittiest thing ever. I bought a couple of them. I I bought one and broke it. And then I bought another one and I turned it into a challenge lock. And then uh, a dude sent this along with uh, these clear plastic locks. Um, and there's all this crap. So. These are Kia knob cylinders. I think all of these cost maybe five, seven bucks. And then this is a, a Schlage Everest that I bought off a dude for, I don't know, 15 bucks, something like that. So you can see where all the money goes in this hobby. And the big thing is not to buy new if you can help it. Because buying new is where you really get gypped. Um, so in the in the lock picking Discord uh, I'm in, uh, we just have a bizarre channel for people to sell or buy locks and or request like, hey, I want to buy a, a Schleg SL29 lock or whatever. Or you can buy them off eBay. Sometimes there, there's been some controversy within the community of people like buying up other people's stock and then selling it for for a profit, which is really shitty. Or people like, or or just regular eBay sellers being really like shitty and overpricing or selling locks that look right but they they have like non-standard pins in them and stuff like that it's just a mess um but one there there are tons of ways that you could save money on this um the the big one is just calling up a local locksmith and saying hey do you have any locks you're throwing out or anything like that or some old ones that are missing keys because i mean you're lock picking them if you can get in without a key, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's that. You can call like storage companies or whatever that are around you because they they can go through locks. They're not necessarily the best locks, but they're they're locks. They're things you can practice with. They'll have stuff that they had to cut off a door because somebody lo lost their key or whatever. You could, if, you could potentially ask your landlord if they have any locks or stuff like that. You could ask family members. You could, you can um, walk around your, uh, walk around alleys and see if anybody like is throwing away some padlocks or they have like a door, an old door with a, a lock sitting in it, shit like that. Yeah. Oh, and another big one is um, um, Habitat for Humanity restores. Um, people can like sell or donate some stuff to those stores, and those are kind of a source for locks in the community. Um, so I think since uh, that was revealed as a good source, um, people have been going to them. So they, they can be a little out of stock. But if you just ask them, like if you walk around the store and, 
and then eventually ask somebody, do you have some like locks that don't have any keys or kind of in eh, condition that they might they might pull out the box and be like, yeah, I have them for like three bucks. Really fun, really expensive hobby, though. <laughs> and then there are all the, like, accessory things that you can get, like these plug followers, which I, if you had seen me earlier, I was using it to, like, make sure the top pins didn't drop into the cylinder while I was um, pushing the other, pushing in the plug. Stuff like that. Oh, and... Tweezers. Yeah. That is buying locks and lock picks one oh one. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, if you if you ever want to know the good places to buy like locks or lock picks, just let me know. I can send you links and shit. I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. I'm gonna yeah, head to bed. I really like this pick stand, but my my like one problem with it is that it feels like it was designed for these like Peterson picks. So these Jimmy Longs don't fit and the Southwards don't fit at all unless I put them in upside down. These are kind of interesting picks. Um, well, I guess they're not picks. They're more rakes. Um, they're for those um, uh, wafer locks um, I talked about earlier. Because they're 
they're basically just squares with holes cut in them that you move up and down to get them in the right place with the key. Um, so these are just rounded off so that they don't get caught in the lock as they move back and forth while you scrub. Actually, now that I think about it, we have a like um, little Word document that has a shit ton of information for beginners that I'll probably send you after this. Yeah. Okay. Gonna end the stream. Uh, if anybody was uh, listening to all that shit uh, and just hasn't said hi, well, thank you for watching. Um, have a good night.